By the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify three trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent, which is everything I just said sounds very fancy, but all it uses is similar triangles. So we, um, we talked about similar figures and their ratios, and we're gonna use that for similar, tri similar right triangles. So, um, what we're gonna do first, and you can do this on your own, and I measured it in centimeters, although you can measure it in inches, and it doesn't really matter, is we're gonna measure all three sides of these three triangles, all right? So we're gonna measure each hypotenuse. So this was 6.4 centimeters. The hypotenuse, if you remember, is the side opposite the right angle. So we're gonna measure all three hypotenuse. Here's my other hypotenuse, 3.7 centimeters, all right? That's opposite my right angle. So if you look at a right triangle, these are my legs. This longest side here, that's always the hypotenuse, all right? And the hypotenuse of this one, I got 8.6 centimeters, okay? All right, and then we're going to, um, what we're gonna do now is measure the shortest side. And in this case, this angle is 60 degrees on all three of these triangles. These are similar triangles, because they all have the same angles. A 90, a 60, so what's left for this guy is 30 in all three triangles, okay? The side that is attached, that is in the hypotenuse, the attached side is called my adjacent side. Okay, so we're gonna measure all three adjacent sides here whoops all right so adjacent means attached to the angle so these are all adjacent to the 60 degree angle and they're all going to touch it so this one's 3.2 centimeters this one is 1.9 centimeters and the reason i did this one again it's the side attached to that 60 degree angle see how it's touching it so it's attached or adjacent and then in this largest triangle, it's this XY, and I got 4.3 when I measured that. All right, if I have the angle in the side across from it, see how that's a cross from that angle? It's not touching the angle at all. That's called my opposite side. Okay, so now we're gonna measure all the opposite sides, all right? So 5.6 centimeters for that one. When I measured this one, I got 3.2 centimeters. And when I measured this one, I got 7.5 centimeters. Um, so you might want to measure, make sure I got, you get the same numbers, um, but I just took a ruler and measured all those sides, okay? So we measured all the sides of the triangles. Now we're gonna write down the links in the respective spaces in the table below, okay? So we're gonna put all the hypotenuses in the hypotenuse section, all the opposites in um, the uh, opposite section, all the adjacents in the adjacent section. So remember, opposite means across from, adjacent means attached. And when we talk about opposite and adjacent, we're always talking about legs. You have the hypotenuse, you have the adjacent leg, which is attached to the angle, and the opposite leg, which is across from the angle. And these terms are really, really important um, when we go to do the work for this week. All right, so let's fill those in. So for triangle ABC, the hypotenuse was 6.4. The op, um, For the smallest triangle is 3.7. For the largest triangle is 8.6. And now we'll do those sides opposite. So for this one, it was 5.6. For triangle PQR, Opposite across from the 60 was 3.2. And then for the XYZ, the opposite was 7.5. All right, so I'm just filling in the um, information that I wrote down those triangles. And then adjacent, remember, the adjacent leg, all right, touching it. All right, let's see, the first triangle, 3.2. The next one, 1.9. And the final one. 4.3, all those touch that 60 degree angle, those adjacent lengths. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, 
since these are all similar triangles because they have the same angles, they all have that 60, 90, and they'll have the 30 because 30 plus 60 plus 90 is 180. All right, so the other angle has to be the same. And remember, similar shapes have all the same angles. All right, we're going to find those ratios. Okay, so first we're going to do opposite over adjacent. Okay, so what I mean by that, I'm going to do this opposite over this adjacent. All right, I'm going to divide those for triangle ABC. So I'm going to do 5.6 divided by 3.2 now I'm going to do um, and I got what do I get when I divide this 1.75 and then I'm going to do let's see for the other triangle it's opposite over adjacent and I got 1.68. And then for the other triangle, I got 7.5 divided by 4.3, which is 1.74. All those are pretty much the same. I rounded, so like it's probably like a little bit off. So it's probably not right at like 3.2. Maybe it was like a little bit bigger, like 3.3. But all these are about the same. All right, opposite over adjacent for all these angles are really, really close. They should have been the exact same because they're all similar. Opposite over adjacent for any right triangle, we're going to call tangent. Okay, so for any right triangle, we're going to call that tangent. And if I type in a ca calculator, the tangent, you've probably seen that before in a calculator, of 60 degrees, the actual Tangent of 60 degrees is 1.73. So if I type that in calculator, and I'll show you in the next slide what I mean by that. All right. So if I type in to my calculator, tangent of the set of 60, I'll get 1.73. Okay. So that's what the actual one should have been. They're all pretty close, but that's what it should have been. All right. So whenever I have a 60 degree angle, if I divide the opposite side by the adjacent side of that 60 degree angle in a right triangle, it will equal 1.73 and if I change the angle so let's say I make it a 70 then the ratios will change but they would all be the same so like the tangent of um, let's say 45 degrees is 1 all right so when I divide opposite over adjacent for a 45 degree angle I always get the number 1 okay so the angle changes and I can figure out what that ratio is going to be. All right. So the next one, we're going to do opposite over hypotenuse. So we're going to do opposite over hypotenuse. So let's see, 5.6 divided by 6.4, 3.2 divided by 3.7, and then 7.5 divided by 8.6. All right. I got 0 0.88 for this. When I divide this one, I get 0 0.87. And when I divide this, I also get 0 0.87. So those ratios are this, again, we're talking about similar shapes. All right, so those ratios are all about the same. Whenever we talk about opposite over hypotenuse, we talk about the sine function. And in the calculator, it's always SIN. So that, that. and if I do sine of 60, it is 0 0.87. So those last two examples were right spot on. So that's pretty cool. Okay. So if I have a 60 degree angle and a right triangle and I divide my opposite side by my hypotenuse, I should get 0.87. Um, and again, if I change the angle, it changes that ratio. So finally, we're going to do adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay. So in the first one, it's, let's see, 3.2 divided by 6.4, so adjacent over hypotenuse. The next one, the adjacent is 1.9. Remember, adjacent means the side that touches the angle over 3.7. And then 
4.3 over 8.6. Alright, so 0 0.5, this one I got 0 0.51, and a 0 0.5, which if I do what's called my cosine, the cosine of 60 is 0 0.5. Alright, so if I divide the adjacent side by the hypotenuse of any triangle, any right triangle, this only works in right triangles, okay, it only works in right triangles, other triangles have, you have to do something else too. If I, um, when I divide the adjacent by the hypotenuse of a 60 degree angle in a right triangle, I will always get 0.5. So what is the point of all this? Okay, first of all, you never have to memorize what is the tangent of 60, what's the tangent of 30, what's the tangent of 45 degrees. It's not something you have to memorize, right? When I was in high school, they used to give us like a table with all of them. So like I would get a table and I would say, all right, tangent of 60 and then in the table would tell me that's 1.73. You guys go use the calculator. You're going to type in tangent of 60 and you'll get that. What this is used for is finding the missing side or finding missing angles in a right triangle. Okay, so we're going to use these to find those. So the point of this activity is just for you to see what do I mean by tangent, sine, and cosine. So we're not actually doing any problems with these. We're going to, we're going to have another video. It's like, how do I use these? Okay, um, so we're going to go into more depth. But I just want you to kind of see, hey, it's true when I... Um, when I have these similar angles, then I can use that information to find missing sides. In the next slide, I'm going to show you how, in Desmos how, what you need to do to make sure your settings are correct and how to get a tangent, a sine, and a cosine in the calculator. Okay, so if you look here, first of all, you need to put your calculator in degree mode. And one of the things you might hear me yell before students take a geometry SOL, you'll know they're going in to take a ge geometry SOL because they'll go degree mode, put your calculator in degree mode, put your calculator in degree mode because we work in degrees in geometry. When you, if you ever take trigonometry, and this is just an introduction to trigonometry, this is like the first day of trigonometry, but let's say you take a course in it, you will work in radians and degrees. Radians are just a different way of measuring an angle in terms of pi. But we always talk about degrees in our class in geometry. And so we want everything in degree mode. So whenever you use Desmos for this, and I rec you guys are going to use the Desmos calculator for this. And make sure, um, remember, you go to Desmos.com. You can also download the Desmos app. You can use it on your phone. But either way, you're going to click on this this uh, tool, it's like a, uh, what is that, a wrench? You click the wrench and you gotta make sure degrees is selected. If not, all your answers to your classwork are going to be wrong. And I'd hate for you to have to redo an entire um, set of questions because uh, you did not do, um, uh, you did not put your calculator in degree mode. So make sure your calculator is always in degree mode. And every time you log into Desmos, you have to change it. Now on the app, unless you close the app completely, I don't think you're going to need to change it every time, but I would always check. Next is where can you find sine, cosine, and tangent in the calculator? You can type in tangent. You can type in sine. But when, I, oh, that's wrong. You can type in T-A-N for tangent. You can type in S-I-N for sine. And you can type in C-O-S for cosine. Um, but when we go to do what's called an inverse sine and inverse cosine, it's actually quicker to use these. So I want you to get in the habit. You're going to click functions and make sure trig is selected. And if you see here, you have sine, cosine, and tangent. And then we're also going to use these, um, when we talk about trig as well. Okay. So you're going to click on functions. So this is, um, if you click on the little keyboard at the bottom of your screen in Desmos, click on functions you'll find sine, cosine, and tangent. If you look here, when I do the tangent of 60, there's that number I was looking for. Tangent sine of 60, there it is, and cosine of 60. So that's how I got those when I typed them in. Okay? So from this lesson, I just wanted you to say, hey, what do I mean by sine, cosine, and tangent? But the biggest thing is, 
how do I find those things in the calculator?